But it feels like you've got two extremes. Let's just do a really hard Brexit and get out, or let's not do it at all. And poor Theresa May in the middle trying to have something of both. Is this a reasonable middle position, or is she trying to have her cake and eat it too? She's trying to find a compromise in the middle, which does not cause too much economic and wider damage to the United Kingdom as it leaves the European Union. But it is a muddle because she's got a battle on her own hands within her party. She's got a battle on her hands with the Europeans who are not really impressed by the compromises she's come up with. And last week's uh, summit meeting in Salzburg was a disaster really because I think she thought she was going to be able to ram through her compromise having already been told that the other Europeans didn't like it. So we're reduced to a choice of four actually. One is not do Brexit at all. One is what we call uh, no deal Brexit, which would cause all sorts of problems. And then there's two sort of compromise versions, one of which we call the kind of Norway option and one of which is what's called the Canada Plus option. Uh, none is satisfactory. All are looking pretty bad. And there's a sense of gloom, I would say, in the UK at the moment that we really don't know how we're going to make this Brexit thing work. No doubt exacerbated the fact that if we go back to the original referendum, it was closely divided. So it's not like the country was all on one side or the other. They seem to be divided themselves. But is it possible to stay in the EU a little bit without having the problem of being subject to their rules, without having any say about what those rules are? Well, the problem with that is that the Europeans say, if you want to stay in, you've got to play by the same rules as the rest of us. Otherwise, that's what we call cherry picking, and it gives you the benefits without the uh, responsibilities of membership. And that, in a sense, is what Theresa May has been asking for, but she keeps being told by the other Europeans that you can't have cake and eat it. So, you know, make up your mind. If you want to stay with us, that's fine, but you're going to have to pay a price, which is what the Norwegians do. Or you stay in completely and you forget about Brexit, but of course you can't do that unless you have a second referendum, uh, which is now being discussed even more than it was even just a few days ago. So, no, what you're talking about is not really something other Europeans are prepared to let us have. So, so, Sir Peter, I mean, obviously this is devilishly difficult. I mean, no one can uh, underestimate how difficult it is. At the same time, in the meantime, the entire UK, the economy, businesses are almost frozen in place because there's so much uncertainty that's gone so long. At some point, is it more important simply to get a decision, whatever it is, so people know how to plan their lives, rather than to have a protracted negotiation that might go on for some time? Well, that's the main argument against one of the things the Labour Party, which is having its annual conference as we speak, uh, has been suggesting. They said, uh, why don't we uh, have more time, negotiate a bit longer, that's what we would do if we were to win a general election. The Europeans don't really want to do that, and as you rightly say, it doesn't give business or anybody else the kind of certainty that you need if you're going to make plans and make your investments. But there is a sense, uh, regardless, you know, let's get this thing done because we voted for it and we now need to make it happen. The problem with that is that the more we look at it, all the ways that Brexit can be made to happen that are out there look like being bad news for the United Kingdom and for its economy and its prosperity, even though at the moment, despite all that uncertainty, sterling is holding up quite well and equities as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, people would like to get it done, but there's a growing sense of nervousness that all the options out there, despite everything that they were promised at the time of the referendum two and a half years ago, that none of them is good for the country.